Anyhow, hey, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Today's a super special Sunday, not just because it's Super Bowl Sunday, but more importantly, it's, um, uh, it's, it's our day. It's our Super Bowl today. Today's not an ordinary day. Amen. I feel it in the spirit. I feel it, I feel it in uh, when we walked in this morning. Uh, yesterday, we had a group of leaders pulled together all week long. And I believe the enemy knows it as well. So I can't think of a better, a better Sunday to talk about generosity. When our projectors are going out, um, our center lights have gone out, um, our digital has gone wacky, and everything was working perfect yesterday. Isn't that just, isn't that just like your house? Like you've got a couple, you have, you have, um, you have family coming over, right? You've made this amazing meal, and then suddenly your oven goes out. Right? Or your barbecue grows out. Whatever it may be, amen? Or, or your garbage disposal goes out. Whatever it may be. But I'm just thankful that we're not dependent on any of those things. That as long as we keep the main thing, the main thing, which is Jesus. He is overall, amen? So I want to preach a message this morning about generosity. And if you've been here the last two Sundays, uh, we just want to just pour this into our house as we started a brand new year about making sure that our house knows that uh, his presence is our passion. It's our priority. Last week we talked about people is our, uh, is our calling. In other words, God is passionate about people. We're going to hear that story this morning. He, he's not that passionate necessarily about, but, uh, about, uh, about bolts and nuts and, and drywall and, and, and ornate build. He's really passionate about people. Amen. And then today is all about generosity is our privilege. And so um, that is our privilege, amen, to be generous with our time and our talent and our treasure. So if you have your Bible open, will you open your Bibles uh, to 1 Chronicles 28? I want to set a little bit of context this morning. Uh, we're going to kind of uh, do two things. One, I want to just share from my heart for a few minutes a message that God laid on my heart. And then I'm going to welcome my wife to come on stage. And, and we're going to share a very, very special um, presentation that we have built for our church that we've been working on whew, uh, almost a year and a half now. And we're ready to unveil it today. We're ready to share it with the church today. So if today's your first day, you picked a very special Sunday to be here. And uh, we're so glad that you're part of our house. Um, First Chronicles 28, uh, if you know anything about the story about David, um, it, it, he's an incredible man. And much like you and I, I believe I, I, um, I resonate with David's story because the fact is, is that when David was chosen to be king, if you know scripture, David was chosen to be king. He wasn't the, less, he wasn't the most likely guy, amen? In fact, he got passed over by many, many, many of his brothers. And finally, the prophet who was trying to uh, find the next king asked, is this all you got? Remember this story? Is this all you have? Well, I got one more son. You don't really want him. He stinks. He's been taking care of the sheep. He sleeps outside. His name is, okay, his name's David. It's David. Have you ever felt like that sometimes? Like you're growing up, you got brothers, you got sisters, you got maybe coworkers, you got uh, friends, you got people, and you're like, um, passed over, passed over, passed over, passed over. It's sort of like if you've ever, my wife tell, shares this story, um, because I, I, uh, I, can't really, uh, I can't really resonate with it, but on the playground, whenever they used to pick teams, uh, she's told the story that she was always, always the person like, okay, I'll take Angela. Well, I'm thankful that uh, I took her, and she's on my team. Amen? Yes. Come on, y'all. It's Valentine's. I'm working this this morning. Come on, y'all. Come on. Did you like that? Whew, that was a good recovery. <laughs> but come on, that was David, you guys. Right? And so fast forward to 1 Chronicles 28. Right, First Chronicles 28, at this point, David had been leading for many, many years. David was quite old. Um, in fact, he was close to dying. But along the way, one thing that marked David is that every time he messed up, what was the one thing he did? He always went back to the, to the Lord. That's why God called him 
And God set him apart because he knew the condition of his heart. He may didn't have all the physical assets, didn't come from maybe the right side of the, the track, so to speak, but he knew the condition of his heart. I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to know that he has our heart this morning. Amen? I may not look the part, but on the inside, man, I'm sold out to the Lord. Amen? Sold out to the Lord. And so that was David. And so in 1 Chronicles 28, it's just, it's just this amazing uh, vision that God had given David uh, in a season to go and rebuild the very temple that had been destroyed. He said, God was saying to David, this is my time, this is my season, and you are the guy that I'm giving this amazing vision to. But interesting enough, in 1 Chronicles 28, David's actually not the one that ends up building. Actually, he, he jumps over David, and he goes to his son. Look at verse 9, and I'm reading out of, the, out of the message Bible this morning. And it says, and you, Solomon, and Solomon once again is, is his son. It says, Solomon, my son, get to know well your father's God. Serve him with how much of your heart, you guys? With all of your heart, search him with your whole heart, the Bible says, and eager mind. For God examines every heart, and he sees through every motive. If you seek him, that's the condition. If you seek him, if you seek him, he'll make sure you find him. But if you abandon him, once again, there's a promise. There's a condition. If you abandon him, he'll leave you for good. Look sharp now. God has chosen you. God has chosen you. God's chosen us. God has chosen you to do what? To sit, to complain, to point fingers, to whine. No, 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 no. That word is to do what? Is to build. God chose you to build his holy house. So be brave, <laughs> be determined, and just do it. Come on, shout do it. Just do it. So here's this amazing, this amazing what I would call impartation from King David to his son, God gave, um, God gave David the vision, the plan, the blueprint, a very detailed blueprint that you can read in chapter 28, but it was Solomon, his son, that was actually going to run with it, that was going to just do it. I don't know about you, but you got to have both visionaries and you got to have people in this house and in your house, we got to have people that are willing to do it. You've heard the expression around when too many chiefs show up in a, a, in a particular project. Everyone, all they want to do is just tell you what to do, but nobody wants to do the work. Amen? No project ever gets done when you got a lot of bosses. Can I have an Amen. No project ever gets to completion if you have a lot of, if you have a lot of bosses. And so great, God's greatest work in that, in that amazing passage, it wasn't about building temples, although that's what David, that's what God had laid on his heart. It was time. But see, God is all about making sure that our hearts are right. Are you listening to me? God's all about making sure that our minds and our souls and our physical bodies and our souls are lined up to his will and his purpose. Amen? God is way more interested in the condition of our hearts than he is in the condition of any kind of building per se. But make no mistake about it, God wants excellence in everything he has his name on. Amen? He doesn't like sloppiness. He doesn't like sloppiness in my heart or your heart. He likes excellence. I didn't say perfection. Because some of us, I won't point you out, some of us are control freaks. And if things don't go just a certain way, you freak out. But I'm thankful that God's not looking for control freaks. He's looking for submitted hearts this morning. Amen? He's looking for hearts that are willing to give him everything. So take a right turn, click over one, one chapter, Chronicles 29, and literally I'm going to be parked out in this chapter for the most of the part of this message. 
Come on, First Chronicles 29, verse 1. It says, then David the king addressed the church. My son Solomon was singled out and chosen by God to do this. But he's young, he's untested, and the work is huge. Well, this is just not a place for people to meet each other, but it's a house for God to meet us. If you underline things in your Bible, underline, this is not just a place for people to meet each other, but a house for God to meet us. And it says, I've done my very best, David is talking still, I've done my very best to get everything together for building this house for my God. All the materials are necessary. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, lumber, precious, very colored stones, and building stones, vast stockpiles. Furthermore, because my heart is in this. Come on, underline that. Because my heart is in this, in addition to and beyond what I have gathered, I am turning over my personal fortune of gold and silver for making this place of worship for my God. And then he goes into a whole bunch of everything that he's giving. 3,000 talents, it's about 113 tons of gold. All from Ophir, uh, the best, uh, and 7,000 talents, 214 tons of silver for covering the walls of the buildings and for the gold and the silver worked by craftsmen and artisans. And now, and now, how about you? <laughs> Who among you is ready and willing to join in the giving? By the way, I'm not planning to take up another offering, so you guys can just, just relax, amen? No, no other offering buckets will be passed out today. And, no, and now, how about you? Who among you is ready and willing to join in the giving? Here's the response. Ready and willing. The heads of families, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, the commanders and the captains in the army, the stewards of the king's affairs, st all stepped forward and gave willingly. They gave 5,000 talents. They gave 10,000 uh, uh, derricks uh, of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 18, ta talents of bronze, 100,000 talents of iron. Anyone who had precious jewels put them in the treasury for the building of the temple. It was this mighty outpouring of generosity. This mighty outpouring of people responding Skip on down to verse 9. It says, and the people, and the people were full of a sense of celebration in all that giving. <laughs> Whew. In all that giving. And all the giving was done willingly, freely, and King David was exuberant. That's the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. I'm thankful for God's stories are not just playing out many, many thousands of years, it's playing out today, amen, that we can draw upon scripture to give us direction and correction and inspiration and, and, and provide context. Because in that first part of that scripture that we just wrote, uh, uh, that we just read, the reality is, is that Solomon and David pointed out, Solomon is a young dude. Solomon is inexperienced. Solomon is, 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 is quite, um, quite uh, unsure. And so, David is, 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 is sharing this with the congregation. But how many know that when God taps on somebody, he gives them the ability to do the impossible, amen? When it's God's timing, you don't have to worry about what man says. You don't even have to worry about what your own insecurities say. I can, I can tell you I resonated with Solomon, and here's why. When God called me into full-time ministry, um, and actually this weekend is significant for me. This weekend, four years ago, my wife and I were celebrating uh, me leaving a corporate job after 20 years with Hewlett Packard. It prepared, um, it prepared me in so many ways for what I'm doing now. But this weekend is so significant because I knew that God had called me to do something significant significant for the kingdom of God. And so I had to make up my mind and say, God, I am all in. And I said that at that altar right there back in 2019, not knowing how God would make the way, God was just asking me, are you in? 
And I responded, God, I don't know how you're gonna do it because in the natural, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But here I am. Here I am. Fast forward to March of 2020 when I leave corporate America and, and I, I raise my hand and surrender my heart and my plans and my ego and, and, and fancy titles and all the other things that, that somehow the world thinks that, um, that, 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 that can justify you. I just said, God, I just want to serve people. And so that day in March 2020, I'm coming up on my four-year anniversary being in full-time ministry. The first week of March, um, I stepped into this amazing ministry, having been, having been a part of it for, what, 33, 34 years, but never in, in any type of position. Just serving, cleaning toilets, helping people, serve people, lead men, serve on a leadership team. No title. Don't really care about titles. But passionate to know that God can use somebody like me. Unfortunately, if you remember the first week of March, uh, by the second week of March, COVID was a thing. And by the third week of March, well, welcome to the ministry. We were shut down. Does anyone remember COVID? Hello? Welcome to the ministry. What an incredible, what an incredible welcome to something that God wrote on your heart for many, many years. But I felt like at that moment that God had somehow, some way, even though I, I, I was young, I'm still young, by the way, even though I was inexperienced at that time, I'm still inexperienced today, but God had a hold of my heart, amen? And he said, God, you gotta be with us. And we navigated that. We navigated storms or hurricanes that year, Hurricane Sally in 2020, navigated just um, uh, crazy things happening across the country around racial tensions, and we felt an experience in our church all along just trying to find, Lord, what are you saying? I want to just encourage somebody this morning that we may not, you may not have it all put together. You and I may not have all the answers, but if we'll simply just trust the Lord. If we'll just trust the Lord, amen? For you see, it was a setup at that moment that God can do all things. He can do the impossible, amen? At that very moment that where, where David had made up his mind he was going to give roughly $450 million, the Bible said, in silver, $17 billion in gold in today's money. That's a pretty nice church, y'all. Hello? By the way, if anybody has $17 billion in gold, I just want to let you know, we'll, we'll give you a generous tax write-off. Amen? We will make room for the gold bars somewhere in this building. Amen? It's the most expensive church, the most expensive te temple ever built. And so then it pivots and then David says, hey, this is not just about a physical building. This is not just a, about a, um, uh, some other uh, agenda. This is a place not only where, where we meet, but more importantly, where God meets us. I had you underline that verse in verse 3 in the Bible. And then he skips on down. He says, because my heart is in this. In other words, he wants to make sure that as they launch into this, this, uh, this program, this, this, this season of building back the temple of the Lord, he wants to make sure, hey, listen, keep the main thing the main thing, which is the Lord, amen? Keep him at the center of everything you do because my heart is in this. I'm willing to give all of my fortune. I'm willing to give everything to the Lord. By the way, it all belongs to him anyways. David didn't come into this with anything, and he knows he can't leave with any of this, amen? So why not just surrender it all to the Lord, amen? Give it all over to him. So then he asked this question, which I'm asking to our house this morning. And now, how about you? Where are you at? Where are we at in terms of surrendering everything over to the Lord? I'm not just talking about our stuff. How about your talent? How about your time? How about the things that you find that are um, uh, so valuable? Do you know those are the very things that God wants you to surrender over to him, amen? Those are the things that he wants to use for his glory and his purpose. For you see, God at that moment, not only in this story, but also for today, God is willing and wanting to bring transformation to the hearts of God's people. And he wants to do it simply by you and I saying, amen, amen. That's where it starts. Amen. In verse 6, go back to that, 
that part there. What's amazing, what's amazing about what unlocked what I call radical generosity across that entire group of people was two things, two very, very important things. Number one is that what the people saw in David, first, he was committed to God. So were his leaders. The second thing that the people saw is that he was, he was leading by example. In other words, he wouldn't ask his, um, his team, he wouldn't ask the people that God had gathered around him to do something that he wasn't willing to do. So that's why the Bible is very specific. The Bible said that he was willing and that he was ready and the people were willing and the people were ready. Why? Because they had a leader willing to go in front, amen? They had a leader willing to set the pace, set the course, amen? In other words, it's uh, watch my example. And so that's what these leaders did. And I'm thankful today, I want you to know, for Angie and I, if there's ever a doubt, I want you to know that we are in this. Amen? No hesitation. I believe we have a, an incredible leadership team that surrounded us yesterday and, and many others that surrounded, that I believe that this is a significant day for our house because people um, uh, just like you and literally all over the world are saying, I am in this, amen? I'm ready. Point the direction. And that's that moment David said to looking around as people were raising their hand and saying, I'll do this and I'll do this and I'll give this and, and I will bring this to the house of the Lord. Faith rose. <laughs> Faith rose. Verse 9 says, because of the generosity of God's people, there was a sense of celebration. Hey, listen, generosity brings praise. When you are generous to other people, that brings or should bring praise on the inside of you. I don't know about you, but I have a heart to give. You don't have to prime me and pump me and give me goosebumps or somehow, some way manipulate me or control me. Or so, I, You don't have to do any of that. I just want to do it God's way, amen, that I know that I know that I know when I give, when you and I give, it brings praise to God, amen, no matter what it is. It brings, it brings praise to God. And so there was a sense of celebration, verse 9 said. All that giving, and they gave it willingly, and they gave it freely. So giving created a massive celebration, a massive praise party. How did they give? They gave willingly. They gave with their whole heart. Um, they gave with no limits. In fact, there is scriptural backing to say that even... Um, Quite frankly, God owns it all, amen? That I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't be limiting my ability to give unto the Lord just 10%. Well, Tim, I just don't think I can give 10%. But I tell you what, I'll just give a dollar. Well, if that's your very best, amen, I'm not here to judge. God's not, I'm not here to judge how, but I wanna make sure the condition of our hearts are in a place where I'm giving God my very best, amen? That's what he's interested in. Is me, is us as a house, are we giving God our very best? Are we, are we absolutely convinced that generosity is our privilege? First, it starts in your heart. It's a heart decision to be generous. Did you know that? It's, it's a heart decision for you and I to be generous. And then it said to give freely. Freely is meaning no pressure. In other words, I didn't read anything in that story where David somehow came around and bonked people on the head or somehow used the power of his position. Hello? Or used somehow coercion or used somehow manipulation to somehow say, you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to give this and you got to give that. No, 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 he didn't do any of that. He just led by example and the people responded. Because I believe generosity is contagious. I believe generosity is contagious. In fact, it says in Proverbs 11, open your, uh, flip over your Bible there, Proverbs 11, you should underline this incredible scripture. It says one person, in verse 24, it says one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Isn't that a paradox? Hold on, I give more, but yet I get back more. 
Isn't that just like scripture? If you lose your life, you gain your life. If I am last, the Bible says, then I become first. Ah, love the scripture, amen? So it says one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly. And what happens? He comes into poverty. Verse 25, it says a generous person will do what? Shout it, will do what? A generous person will prosper. Once again, it didn't talk about, it doesn't talk about how to be generous. It talks about the value of being generous. Did you catch that? It doesn't give you the how. That's between you and the Lord, right? But it gives you the, it gives you the value. It gives you the, uh, it gives you the command for us to be generous. Amen? It says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Let me read in a different version, the message version. Um, I added this to my notes. It says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. (laughs) The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I don't know about you, but I want my world to be super large. How about you? I want my world around me to be super large. With my time, with my talent, with my treasure, I want to be surrounded in a house of people that are large. Amen? Large thinking, large living, amen? Large generosity, large faith, amen? Large love, large capacity to give and to go and to sow, amen? I don't want to be constrained by all of my past and all of people's opinions and what culture says I can and can't do or whatever the lack of degrees on my wall says I can or can't do or whatever my bank account says I can or can't do. I want to live large because I have surrendered my heart to the Lord. How about you? So my question for you uh, this morning is, are you in? Are you in? That's a condition that you have to answer before the Lord. Because here's what I do know, that when I made a decision to say, God, I am all in, it's amazing. He unlocks, he unlocks heaven over my life. He unlocks heaven over our house. For you see, wealth is a gift. You and I, we own nothing. Well, hold on now. I've got a mortgage to my house. I've got a car loan. I've got, um, I've got, I've bought this and this and this on a credit card. Actually, you don't own that anyways. (laughs) The bank owns that. Amen? Try it sometime. Quit paying your mortgage payment. How's that going to work out for you? You're truly going to find out who owns your house. Hey, quit paying your golf power bill this week. Well, or this month. Well, I just got to pray about it. No, I guarantee you, if you don't pay your golf power bill, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be living in the dark. Amen? Oh, Pastor Tim, can the church help me pay my power bill? I haven't paid it in five months. Well, that's a problem. Amen? Hey, I just know that everything we own, everything that oftentimes we put value in, it's all going to disappear, y'all. Solomon's temple or the temple that David helped um, uh, construct and, 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 and put all that money into it. Today, if you go there today, it's just a pile of rubble. The billions upon billions, it's just, it's just stones. This building that we're sitting in that we've enjoyed for the last 30 plus years, we're incredibly grateful for it. But at some point, it will just be, it, it will just be in rubble, Amen. The things that you take value in, that you own, at some point, they will fall apart, amen? You can't take them with you. So the question that we have today is, what do we do with what we have that God has blessed you and I with? What do we do with the the treasure and the talent and the time that God has given us? How do we make sure that the next 30 years over over this house and over this campus and over this ministry, how do we ensure that the, 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 the folks after us are enjoying and and, and moving closer to the heart of God. How do we do it? You say, I'm in. I'm in. Lord, I'm in. The second thing that we do, we put some plans in place. I'm going to welcome my wife to come up to the stage. We want to share with you, as I mentioned at the very beginning, how 
we believe God has uniquely positioned our house for the next 30 years to ensure that our legacy, that our family and our family's family and grandkids instead of grand dogs currently are, are, are running around this house. I just got to keep working that one, you guys. How do you know it requires a church full of people saying, I'm in. I'm in. I may not have all the answers. I may not have, uh, but, but God, my heart is in it. God, my heart is in it. So we call today Heart for the House Sunday. And I want my wife just to share on her heart. She's been here from the very beginning. And uh, we honored a number of people yesterday that had been here from the very beginning. So I want to honor my mother-in-law. Uh, Mama B, will you stand up? And uh, we're so honored uh, that you're with us this morning. I just hear some faces of familiar things. But uh, just to talk about vision, we are a church that um, we influence people for Jesus. Who's heard us say that? That that's our vision. We've already shared, you know, what our mandate is that I've said this today. Tim has said this today. These are things that everything we do falls in one of these things. And at the end of the day, Jesus is overall. It's not, oh, man, I hope that it's about this or that. At the end of the day, Jesus is going to be the end-all, be-all. His word, who he is, his presence, that is going to be the pinnacle of everything that we do. He is the plumb line. He is everything yeah. for us. And so everything will always line up to that. And... Um, and that's just who we are. But we want to just give you a little bit of history of where we've come from. So many of you um, may or may not know. So I did, we just had my mother stand. So my mom and dad are the ones who founded this place that you're sitting in. And most of you, and this is actually just going to hurt my little heart. How many of you never met my father, Lyndall Ballinger? Ay, ay, ay. He was such a great person most of the time. No, I'm just kidding. I love him so much. He was amazing. But in 1986, this church was birthed. And there was a vision that my dad, mom and dad had. And, and they, I was about 14 years old. Don't do the math. And, um, and I was, thought my parents were crazy, that they were going to start this church out of the middle of nowhere. Started in a hotel, moved to a warehouse down the street that had no air conditioning, crazy red carpet and weird teal drapes and it was just horrible and um and I was just like I don't even know what my parents are doing but what what they never left from was that we were going to preach the gospel that the Holy Spirit was going to be honored and that we were going to flow with the Holy Spirit and if he said move we would move and if he said do it we would do it and, and I learned as a young person to honor and listen for his voice in my life. And I had experiences in God's presence that most people don't get to have. And that's why you can argue with me all day long that the presence of God may or may not be real. But once you've had an experience, you can argue with me all day long. But if I've had an experience, you can't tell me it's not real. Amen? And that's what this house was founded on. And I just want to give you just a, a little taste of, of what that was like for me growing up and what I heard over and over and over. And I just want you guys to hear it from my dad's voice. But we'll have to turn up the volume. <laughs> we'll try it again. Try it one more time, maybe. We are full of the same Holy Spirit, carrying around the same revelation and watching God fulfill his word in the earth. Mm. I don't know about you, but I don't want to grieve him. I don't want to quench him. I don't want to resist him. I want to hang out. I want him to be my most intimate 
friend in all of the universe. Amen. That's what I grew up on. Amen. You can catch a few of his messages way, way back on YouTube, but YouTube was new <laughs> uh, when he went to be with Jesus. But um, so we were founded on these things, and none of those things will ever change who we are as a house. That's, right. that's who we were, that's who we are, and that's who we will be forever and ever and ever because that's who God's assigned us to be. And I, you've heard us say, we are just a part of the big kingdom of God. So when Tim is talking today about be all in, we're asking you to be all in for part of our assignment here in the house. We're just part of the big kingdom of God, right? right. It's not like, oh, we, we just want you to be us four and no more. Listen, the smaller the world, you're, the bigger your drama. Don't be doing that. Um, we want things to get larger and larger. We're, uh, we've got a, a couple of folks and obviously the stories that are coming out of our house over the last, you know, 30 plus years are just incredible. And, you know, these are a couple of folks. So Alicia, I think I saw you earlier. And uh, what a story this young lady has. And, and once again, you guys can read it. But uh, about two years ago, she stepped in here on a Sunday and gave her life to the Lord. And in her own words, uh, since that day, she has been radically changed. Radically changed and set on a course, I believe, she has an incredible future and, and, um, and everything that God's called her to do. The Matthews, uh, another amazing story of how they found their way to this house. It's unusual. But you know what? God does the unusual. Amen? God brings people into our lives and into our house that not only are, not only are they blessed, but we're blessed because of them. And that's the case, that's absolutely the case of, of this amazing couple. And now their two, uh, their two boys serve uh, all over our church, and we're incredibly grateful for that. Um, we've got this guy right here. So this is Freddie. Where is Freddie? Freddie, where are you at? Oh, you're, mi you're missing the tee up. Um, so this young man got saved uh, about two years ago on a uh, service right before Christmas Eve. Radically saved. And um, came out of just incredible trauma and drama and addictions. And God is radically changing his life. And I can't wait to see where God's going to take, take him. We've got uh, these other two folks. Devin Bonner uh, found just his footing and found his life and found um, uh, a wife and found just incredible uh, de identity and destiny and calling. The Cox family, another great example of how, uh, you know, just a family that just surrenders their heart to the Lord. First, their relationship, how they found one another is supernatural. And then how they found this house is supernatural. And then last but not least is this, uh, this uh, young, cute couple right here. <laughs> there ain't nobody in this town that doesn't know John Mobley. Hey. I'm sitting in the Publix grocery line the other day, and they asked me what church I go to. I said, well, Jubilee. Yeah, you know John Mobley? I've never heard of the dude. <laughs> True story. Oh, you don't know John Mobley? I'm like, never heard of him. Come on, so thankful for folks that not only have laid down their life, but also serve in our house. Incredibly grateful. If it wasn't for them, then it's not, it doesn't allow us to do everything that God's called us to do as a house. And so we wanted to share um, just a little bit. You can grab it. Uh, we want to share just a little bit about the impact of your generosity. Just three quick data points in terms of what your generosity does in our house. And so since Angie and I uh, stepped into the full-time role of, of lead pastors back in 2021, October of 2021, we've seen over 300 people make a decision for Christ. Come on, y'all. 300 souls made a decision to give their life to Christ. Amen. Come on, somebody. Over 70 folks water baptized. By the way, if you've not signed up yet in two weeks, we're going to be dunking people for Jesus right here. Amen? Right in the middle of a Sunday morning service. Please sign up. I get excited to see people make a decision. Our, our mandate is to populate heaven and plunder hell. Hello? Your mandate is to populate heaven and plunder hell. Amen? And we will use every means possible 
in order to do that. So that's why you're seeing up there where we have used uh, the power of food because oftentimes people don't want to know about your Jesus when their belly is hungry, amen? So uh, since we started uh, two, two and a half years ago, we've given over half a million pounds of food away. That's a lot of food, y'all. Amen? Nearly 200 pallets of stuff. I don't know if you've ever seen a pallet of stuff, but that's a lot of stuff. Amen? That we just basically, we just said, here it is. God, if you can get it to us, you can get it through us. And by the way, we don't put our name on it. We don't stamp Jubilee Church on it. Why? Because we don't own it. Who does? God does. Amen? We don't take claim. And in fact, we partner today with roughly about a dozen nonprofits all over this area. And all we do, we, we get stuff or we've getting, we, we have received stuff and then we just simply give it away. Amen? I don't know about you, but that's the kingdom. Amen? Over 3,000 backpack stuff with school supplies for kids in need. And by the way, we'll do it again in July. So you better sign up. And then that last one I just wanted to share is just amazing as we were preparing for this. As a house, outside of our walls, over the last, what, three years, we have given over $600,000 away outside of these walls. Can you give God a big shout of praise? So how about in the house? And over the last several years, when you have a campus that's 30 years old, it needs investment, y'all. So we haven't been just sitting around twiddling our thumbs and hoping that, that roofs get repaired and playgrounds get replaced and all. No, we actually have been believing God, taking steps of faith, being good stewards over what we have. Make no mistake about it. But so we have given, you have given $713,000 towards capital improvement projects in our campus basically um, since 2016, where we've been investing back in this campus. Amen? You're like, man, that's a lot of money, but I still see stains on the carpet. <laughs> yeah, it's all you coffee drinkers. Amen? So effectively today, we're banning coffee in our auditorium. No. Hey, we, we're not building buildings to worship them. Amen? But over, over the last few years, we've had to replace a roof. That roof, if, in case you're curious, was $288,000. That's a lot of money, y'all. How about replacing an air conditioner? Two summers ago, we had an air conditioner go out in this auditorium. Uh, the other one is uh, our, uh, we have a great partner called Commander Air. Uh, they're very generous to us. We've been very generous to them. And, they're, and, they, and they inspected our air conditioner like, honestly, we don't know how they're running. What do you mean? We've never seen these before. And we said, you know what? Three things are holding these air conditioners together. The Holy Ghost, bubble gum, and duct tape. Amen? But we're good stewards over it. Amen? But when we had to replace one, it was $50,000. So you want to know how we get to 713? When you start taking big swings like that, how about a playground? We, we were able to invest in, in our house, invest in our community, and we spent over $150,000 on a playground. I'm just sharing some of these data points, those cameras that you're seeing behind you that we get the opportunity to, to broadcast all over the world, our soundboard, um, our, our, our switcher, everything that we do digitally, um, we've been able to replace and, and, and upgrade those so that we can get the message outside of these four walls. It costs money. Amen. And because of your generosity, we've been able to do that. And so on behalf of Ange and myself, thank you. Thank you. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. So now we want to shift. We believe in 1 Chronicles 29 that God has given Ange and I, um, her mother and her father had the vision. We believe, I feel the spirit of Solomon upon us right now. That God had, um, he, was the, he was the visionary, and God has given us the ability to be the general contractor, to go build, to go build. This is a season, I feel the weight in the spirit, y'all. We, 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 um, uh, we've been working on this for the last year and a half. We've been asking the Lord, Lord, when is the right timing? When do we release this? When do we, when do we go? 
And I believe now is the time to go, amen? Now is the time for us to trust God, believe God. So God, what do you want to accomplish in our house today? Because I'm incredibly grateful for everything we've done the last 30 plus years. And so these are the priorities that God has laid on our heart. Number one is that we must increase the safety and security over our campus. Well, that, that doesn't make, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense because today, and, and we welcome our community to come in, um, not only on Sundays, but by the way, we have 230 some odd students here Monday through Friday, plus another 50 staff here as well. My primary, our primary responsibility is to make sure it's safe and to make sure it's secure. And when anybody can walk through our main hallway down to the men's bathroom or the women's bathroom or anywhere this campus and basically be unchecked and, and, and have act, although I'm, I'm thankful for our security team. By the way, you don't know at any one time who is um, packing, but you're safe. Amen? I'll just leave it at that. In fact, there's a young man right now named Rob Brazy. He's, not, he's, he's, he's got security, and he means it. Amen? We want you guys to be safe. But we also need to do some things in our campus to make our campus safe, amen? So that's our first priority, is that we're gonna, we're, uh, you're gonna see in just a second how we're addressing that. The second priority is that we believe that the next generation is the generation that we must be pouring into. Many of us were the beneficiaries of men and women just like us 30 years ago that made a decision to invest in order to, to, uh, to make this campus possible that you and I get to enjoy every Sunday. But somebody had to say, amen. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for those men and those women that said amen. But I know now, now it's our turn to invest for my daughters and their kids. Amen. So that's the second thing. The third thing that we absolutely believe is that we need to do, we need to have more space to do life together. So we're, we're, um, we need to expand our ability to welcome people into our campus, gather on Sunday mornings, linger around a coffee pot that will be non-existent. Amen? <laughs> just, I just said you're paying attention. Come on, y'all. We got to use the space that God has given us to its full extent to bring glory and honor to him. The other one, which is near and dear to my heart, and, and I couldn't have thought of a better Sunday for our lights to go out and our tech, some of our tech to go wonky, is we, we need to upgrade our audio visual. What you're looking at above you is 30 years old. We're good stewards, amen? We take care of stuff, but stuff goes out. It just goes out. And so now's the time for us to upgrade um, our, uh, our lighting, upgrade our stage, upgrade our visual. All those things are ready to be upgraded. Amen? And then last but not least is, um, once again, we believe that we want the, the, the inside and the outside of our campus to match the vision over our house. Yeah. Our vision is to influence people for Jesus. Do you realize on any given day, 35,000 cars drive by W Street? What a mission field. Amen. But I just know that God is impressing upon Angie and I and our team to say, all right, we need to upgrade. We need a cohesive feel across outside, inside to match that everything that God's doing. So without further ado, Angie and I want to share with you the culmination of a year and a half's worth of work, a ton of prayer, a lot of planning, a lot of conversations um, we've got an architect we've been working with. We've got a general contractor we've been working with. And so if you guys will dim the lights, put your eyes behind me. Are you ready? <laughs>
Okay. So there you have it. Um, so that's what we've been working on for about a year and a half. Um, it was, do we do new construction, which we had originally drawn up, and then it was like, no, do we do this, do we do that? And we really wanted to be the best stewards with what we have. And we decided to use the footprint that we have yeah. and just expand and upgrade what we have. And so definitely what you just saw was just a directional um, version. It's not going to look identical to that, but pretty close um, to that. And so a couple of things I just want to highlight, and I know the time, so thank you for your patience. But um, it's always me when I get up here. I always go over. What is that? Um, but, but I think that, that a couple of things, the safety and security, to just give you some background to what you saw on that, that fun, beautiful video by Building God's Way. That's the name of the architectural company that we used. And, um, but the men's bathroom will be moving up where the women's bathroom is. And the men's and women's will both be in the front hallway. And this side hallway will be, blot, will be a security check. And from that point, it will be secure for all of our kids' zone area. And no longer will any adult in the building be able to go down to our kids' zone. And um, the bathroom where the current men's bathroom is will turn into dedicated bathrooms for boys and girls for children only. So that, yeah, so that's awesome. Um, which is super important for our school, for our academy. Um, as well as it can also be used for Sundays as well. So we're not, when kids are going to the restroom from our kids' church, they're using those and not using our main restrooms. And they're having to be monitored and all these things that are happening. And so that's part of that safety and security plan. How many of you know that's super important? And um, so that's a big change. We'll be enclosing our portico out there. Um, we are still working on being able to still drive under an inc inclement weather. I know it looked like a little arbor and all that, so don't worry. Everybody take a deep breath. We're going to work on that. Um, but we will be enclosing that, so it will literally triple our space out there. And we're calling that, it's like a third space. So not only will that give a lot more room on a Sunday, but also like men's group, women's groups, young adults, they'll be able to have meetings out there during the week, at night. So it's a space because right now we use the table across the street. How many of you have been to the table? Which is awesome, but we don't own that. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a problem. And right now it's been a blessing because we've had a grant that has paid for that. But eventually we don't want to have to pay for that when we could use what we own. Amen? So again, those are all things that we're being good stewards of. So that's, that's that relational space we're talking about. That's some of the safety and security um, that we'll be talking about. Um, any other high points? Oh, and then all of our audio visual. I mean, that just speaks for itself, y'all. The lights just go off. The projectors go off. It's just, you know, it's a thing. Um, so we got to fix all that. And so Amen. we're working on that. Part of our plan, once again, is an aesthetic update. We want to uh, get rid of uh, all the tile throughout our building. We want to go to polished concrete. Uh, it, it's from a maintenance perspective, it looks good, it's clean. Uh, we're going to paint the walls. We're going to take that same color scheme that you guys saw in the video. We're going to take it throughout the, uh, throughout the building. Uh, it's going to be a significant upgrade. Uh, we're going to upgrade our kids' church. We've already started that with, um, we took out some uh, old staging. We upgraded that. We want to upgrade the flooring in there. We want to do a fresh coat of paint in there. Uh, we want to address the sound and the lights in there as well. Uh, how many know uh, that uh, this, this is the time, amen? This is the season for us to do this. Um, quick disclaimer, it's going to be, uh, when we start, it's going to be messy. It's going to be dusty. It's going to be dirty. It's going to be inconvenient. Um, it'll be disruptive. You won't be able to maybe park in your favorite spot or go hang out on your favorite toilet. It'll be, it'll be, I mean, <laughs> it'll be messy, amen? But one thing that, uh, one thing we've gotten absolute clarity from, from our architect is that the women's stalls will be, uh, make sure that they are plenty size uh, for all the ladies that should be, amen, amen. The, guy, the guys are like, uh, uh, I don't understand. Trust me. We had to demonstrate, ladies, for the architect. I'm like, you better make these bigger. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. So let me get to the, um, what I believe the faith part of this comes in. Two things um, as part of our timeline that we want to do. Uh, today is the kickoff. We're believing that we're going to start construction this summer. Uh, and we believe that we're going to go for two years raising 
uh, money towards what we call heart for the house. Two things we need desperately. We need your prayers. Pray over this project. Pray for Angie and I. Pray for everyone involved. And the second thing that we need, we need your generosity. And so we're believing God, and just to set the stage that uh, as a house, uh, when this building was originally built, as I mentioned at uh, the very beginning, with roughly about 100 what I call founders, uh, the building, the land, uh, was roughly about a million dollars. So we have never in the history of our church ever uh, raised $1.5 million. It's a lot of money. I get it. But I just want to know that Angie and I will lead by example. Amen? Our hearts are in it. Our prayer is that your hearts are in it as well. Because if your heart's in it, then your wallet and your stuff will be in it as well. Amen? So first thing is pray. Second thing is to give generously. And as I said, our goal is to, um, is to start construction this summer. Um, I believe it's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of where God's taking us as a house. We have a 10-year plan, by the way. And as God provides, we'll build. But for right now, we're going to remodel. Amen? Right now, we're going to take care of what we, we do have and make it safe and secure and modernize and upgrade and all those good things. And then we're going to, then we're going to uh, t start talking about building something. And uh, we've got a very, very good plan that at some point we'd love to share with you. By the way, um, in the foyer when you walk out this morning, um, uh, there will be two folks, Jim, uh, Jim Yanelli and Karina Miller, who have been a, a, a critical part of our leadership team making this project happen. They'll be in the foyer with an iPad. Uh, they can show you any of the diagrams and, and just walk you through any of this because we're flying through this because of the sake of time. But we want you guys to know that we'll answer any questions that you have, all right? And uh, there will be a lot of questions but that's okay, amen? So let's talk about next steps. Oh, sorry, I, I wanna share this, uh, shoot. Um, that's a picture of my uh, father-in-law and my, uh, my mother-in-law, it looks absolutely different, uh, no different at all, right? Uh, same, absolute same. These are the founders. And I just wanted to declare this morning that God's faithful, amen? That today, standing on the stage, we're not starting from zero. We already have $250,000 committed towards this project, amen? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, somebody. For you see, we're a generous church, amen? We're good stewards over what we have. So we've learned how to save money, <laughs> amen? We've learned how to uh, make the best use of the money that we have coming in. And so I am expecting, we are expecting that God will finish what he started, amen? Why? Because he's faithful. And so here's what we're asking. These three things. We want you to prayerfully consider a 24-month pledge. Over the next two years, we're believing God that we'll be, the, we'll be able to do this sooner, to be quite honest with you. We're stepping in faith, y'all. We're stepping in faith. For the next two years, we're asking every single person in our house People that have been connected to our house but are no longer here but follow what we do and has been incredibly blessed. Our school, we've had, we've been in, we've had a school for nearly 30 years. So we're going to reach back to all those folks. Um, a community, people that have been blessed because of what we've done. We just believe 1.5 million is a lot of money in the natural, but with God all things are possible. Amen? So today's faith day. My faith, our faith is never higher than it is today. But without you saying I'm in, then all we're doing is we're looking back and saying, where is everybody? But I'm thankful that that's not the case. We have a church full of people that are saying, amen. Second thing that we want you to do um, is if you would pray about how do you give a generous gift. We are, as I mentioned, Angie and I, we're hoping to start construction this summer. Why this summer? Because in order for us to um, destroy bathrooms and, and all the things that go along with that significant move, we have to do it during the summer when we don't have 230 kids on our campus. And so this, it'll be an important milestone. And uh, we're just, we're, we're putting it out in front of our church. Amen? We're putting it out in front of our church. And then last but not least, um, <laughs> It's just an, this is an incredible value that um, two weeks from today, we're calling it Commitment Sunday. We're going to hand out, if you guys go ahead and do it, we're going to hand out pledge cards to you. We want every family to receive one. Obviously, if, you, if you're single or a young adult or even a kid for that matter, you're not here with mom and dad, 
we want you to grab one of these. Take that card, and I'm going to give you some quick instructions. No, we just want you to take this. We don't want you to necessarily make a commitment today because nope. we want you to go talk to God. Because we're not asking you what to give. We want you to ask God what he wants to ask you to give. Yeah, so in, in two weeks, we're calling it Commitment Sunday. It's the same Sunday that we're going to preach on faith is our response. Because for everybody in the sound of my voice this morning, this will be a faith step. This will be a faith step. In the natural, it doesn't, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense when I look at my bank account. But I just believe that when we respond in faith, God responds. Amen? That when we take steps of obedience, God, God overwhelms us with his goodness and his kindness. And I just know that today is a significant day for us. So quite simply, you've got this pledge card now in your hand. We're asking you to pray, commit, and give. On the inside, you'll see quite simply just uh, some simple information. Once again, you're not filling this out today. You're gonna pray over this. But when we come back in two weeks, specifically for this, you'll bring this back. And we're asking humbly, humbly, every single person in our church, do what the Holy Spirit directs you to do. We launch a, a website today, that QR code will be live today. It'll have a whole lot more information. It'll have a whole lot um, more videos and stuff that, that we'll have over the course of the next two years. There'll be all the content. We've shot a bunch of videos and given you a lot of sneak peeks behind what we're doing. So that's what that QR code goes to. And on the very back, if you'll just look on the very back, I got real blessed by this. Because what happens is that when you give a little, God makes a lot. For you see, I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm praying that somebody in the sound of my voice this morning, you come up underneath this load and you can write a check for $1.5 million. That would be incredible, wouldn't it? I wish I could, but I can't. But I can do my part. You can do your part, amen? I believe if everyone does their part, God gets the, God gets the increase. God gives the increase. God gets the glory, amen? Anything you wanna say? I want us to do something right now. Did we get all the cards passed out? Will you stand to your feet, church? Thank you for your patience. I want us to take a step right now. And once again, we're not asking for these back in two weeks. Well, everybody, if you say, I'm in, whatever that looks like, I don't know what that looks like. I want our leaders to come first down to the front. Come on, you guys lead by example. Join me actually up on stage, if you would. Come on, if you're in our Build Your Church group, I want you guys to come down front. Come up on the stage. Leaders lead, amen.